Sammy comes out of the tunnel. Don't think that wasn't planned by Manny Diaz. And Allison, how about how the Canes have dealt with the buildup this week for this game? Well, what's cool about this rivalry, Bob, is that the hype begins the moment the previous game ends. For Florida State, when they left the field last week, fans started chanting, beat Miami. The hurricane warning flag has been flying all week at the Seminoles practice field. For the Canes, in the locker room postgame, Manny Diaz finished his speech by starting the Florida State fight song. And it's been playing on loop all week at their practice, even playing in team meetings. Now the hype is real. It is palpable between these two teams. Jaron Williams described it to me like this. He said, we try to prepare like every game is the same, but we know this week is different. When it comes game time, it's like you're ready to explode. I, I love that from Jaron Williams, the, the brutal honesty of it. This is such an incredible moment in atmosphere with this rivalry that is truly founded on dislike for the other team. The Knowles won the toss, and they deferred their option to the third quarter, so the Canes will start with the ball. Inside the 10. He's going to get bottled up and barely make it to the 20 yard line as we take a look at today's crunch time. Brought to you by Yo Cheez It. Well, this is what resulted in yet another quarterback flip for the Kings. Jaron Williams to KJ Osborne, 32 yards with 58 seconds to go last week. Miami won 16 to 12 over Pitt as Williams took over for Nikosi Perry who had started the last three games and then now it goes back to Jaron Williams who of course was their starting quarterback at the beginning of the season and I think he's their future very talented thrower of the football today's a big moment for him he has the opportunity on the road to lead this team to win just like that we're gonna get five yards with authority Offside, defense number 91. Five yard penalty, first down. If you're going to jump in the neutral zone in a Miami FSU game, that's how you jump in the neutral <laughs> yeah. zone. You set, set the, <laughs> send the message quickly. I can't imagine Willie Taggart is, is super upset with that one. DJ Dallas missed last week's game with a knee injury, and he is back in a tailback to start. As Williams goes play action on first down, and that is a first down hook up and a pile drive tackle. K.J. Osborne thrown to the deck by Asante Samuel. It's a nice throw by Jaron Williams. Good catch by Osborne. Listen, if you're going to let him play like that, make sure you let him play like that all day to the officiating crew. screen Jeff Thomas out to about the 39 yard line he picks up seven so Nasrul Dean made the stop and for Miami at four and four all seven of their FBS games have come down to one possession only Miami and North Carolina can say that and these teams are very similar I mean Florida State's lost four games by 14 points Miami has seven games FBS that are decided by one possession and that's where they are in their rebuild their growth processes all those little things really factoring into wins and losses another screen this one to Osborne he's got nowhere to go he lost about four or five now it's gonna be third down and long for a team as you just saw that has struggled brutally on third down this season 
and that resulted as much as anything in the quarterback flip last week again. Nikosi Perry could not make a third down conversion happen at Pitt. Jaron Williams took over as a result. And, and one of the reasons why they struggle on third right now is because they don't have a guy that they can point to and say, we trust in man-to-man -man for you to win. To me, it's Brevin Jordan, number nine. He's the guy that should be this third down go-to. Here comes the blitz off the edge. It's picked up. Williams is incomplete. Looked like he wanted to find Jordan and threw it behind him with Amari Gaynor getting some pressure on the quarterback. Jordan, you, you could see the coach talking to him. It was man-to-man -man defense, and Jordan sat like it was zone. Man, you, run, you want to run away. Miscommunication by quarterback and his dynamic tight end. DJ Matthews is going to let it bounce. Takes a sideways hop to one of the up men. And it's brought out to about the 35-yard line by Trey Young. A difference maker at tailback for Florida State. Cam Akers is probably the best player in this game. He's special, strong, powerful. He's got long speed, great vision, can laterally cut. I would go say this. He's probably the best back in college football that we don't talk about enough. And if he was behind a more experienced and an offensive line that executed better, would be in the Heisman conversation. Hornybrook double clutches on a wide receiver screen of his own. And Tamari and Terry gets down the sideline and almost broke it. He picked up 12 and a Florida State first down for Willie Taggart, who I think everyone in Florida State is hoping will be able to flip things like he flipped things in the past at Western Kentucky, at USF. And now they went Wildcat a bunch last week with Cam Akers. And they're going to start off with the Wild Cam here on first down, but he lost a yard. Wildcat's a big part of this offense. Really, it's just another way because Akers is so special. Willie Taggart realizes, I got to get him the football as much as possible. Hornybrook, screen, DJ Matthews. He gets down the sideline with a flag down. Number six, 10 yard penalty, second down. Trey McKinney, the tight end for Florida State, guilty of the hold, so it's going to be second down and long now. McKinney's a. The football will follow number six a lot today. He, their tight end, they ask him to do so much, but that was a really nice job by Romeo Finley to fight through that block and force that hold by McKinney. You should see as you look over to the sideline, you should anticipate for Florida State that you're going to get one safety middle of the field, man-to-man -man coverage. Barney Brook coming back to help out the quarterback is D.J. Matthews for a modest game. We'll see this all afternoon. Tamari and Terry, Trajan Bandy, already with some good old-fashioned Florida State U.M. trash talking. This is on the opposite side of the field, by the way, from where the ball went. And listen, Tamari Ontario is 6'5", and Bandy's only 5'9", but Bandy will not back down to the big receiver. Third down and 15. Four-man rush for the Canes. Hornybrook into traffic. Almost picked off. That was right in the hands of Gervin Hall and charred free, or that chain was about to make an early appearance. An outstanding job as a safety of playing high. Watch Hall on the right side of the screen. Put his foot in the get ground and then drive Terry, anticipating that in route. Right there for the bang bang play. Next time you obviously want that pick. But good job of playing high and driving through the receiver. AJ Osborne back deep to receive as we trade punts to start here in Tallahassee. Tommy Martin just about. Had it deflected. Fair catch. 
Made inside the 20-yard line by Osborne. Canes close to two hours before kickoff. That's Cameron Harris, running back, who went down to stretch in the end zone to our left. That's on the Florida State side of the field. Well, that's a freshman guard, Dante Lucas, in the gold pants there. He took exception, and they escorted Cameron Harris to the opposite side of the field and said, no, young fella, this is not your end. You need to warm up at the other end. And we cut that down. It was a good 10 minutes or so Say, bro. of old-fashioned reunion time. As DJ Dallas goes wildcat and goes up the middle for about two and a half to three yards. Robert Cooper made the stop for the Knowles. Guys, I talked to Harris about that little uh, incident pregame, and he said it's part of his routine every week that he walks the field and warms up, stretches in the opposite or opponent's end zone. And Needless to say, he was surprised, but certainly not shocked that the Seminoles didn't take kindly to it and did know a couple of the guys from South Florida that were involved. He brushed it off, but said it definitely adds a little extra motivation. Williams to throw on second down. Shoots one up the seam for Osborne. That's knocked away. Stanford Samuels gets a pass defense, and now it's third down and seven. How about the keys today for Jaron Williams? I think he's got to be willing to throw the football downfield. You can't be checked down, Charlie. And then there's some tells by Florida State's defense where those guys line up pre-snap that'll give you information to help you play faster. And a lot of the throws are going to have to go to the perimeter with some touch over a long seminal defense. Blitz, screen pass set up beautifully to DJ Dallas. He's got blockers out in front. Spins free of a tackler at the 40. DJ Dallas down the sideline. And there's the first big chump play of the game. It goes to the Canes. And they've got a first down after a pickup of 42. It's a beautiful call. The safety's the one that's responsible for DJ Dallas. He dropped down on the left side of our screen. Great call by Dan Enos, anticipating that pressure. Those safeties play too high. Outstanding timing of that screen to help this third down offense convert. Robert Burns, check that. Cameron Harris takes the handoff flag down. And he loses about two and a half to three yards. We'll have to check the marker. Well, you don't want, I would think, if you're really Taggart to accept the penalty, you want to take the play. That's a loss of three and a half to four yards on first down. You want to decline the penalty if you're Florida State. Absolutely. Second down. It's going to be second down and close to 14 for Miami. I think this is another screen opportunity for, for Miami. They love the screen on second and long because their offensive line is still so young, not able to hold up. Play action. Williams well protected. He's going to take a shot for Jeff Thomas. Drops it in. That's a Canes touchdown. Throw. Watch Jaron Williams step up, see his eyes go from right to left, and a beautiful ball thrown right down the hash. Perfect location to Jeff Thomas, who won at the line of scrimmage. Thomas was suspended the last two games. That's his third touchdown reception of the season. Matty Diaz gets a 39-yard score to open for Miami. Bob Schusen, Dan Orlovsky, Allison Williams. And now can Florida State answer. That's what I, football's fun. That's what that's <laughs> the dance I did when we got assigned this game. Right, exactly. That's the dance I do at the media buffet. <laughs> Now, 
booming kick's going to go through the back of the end zone by Bubba Baxa. How about back to the touchdown? Well, it's a double post, and Mallory, the tight end, is going to be the guy that runs this post to take away that safety, Akeem, Grant, Akeem Dent. And when you draw this up as a coach, you go, listen, I'll take care of that safety. Now watch at the bottom of the screen, Jeff Thomas. It's your job, receiver. If I take the safety out, you got to win on your route. Great job at the line of scrimmage. Getting to the hash, that's where the location for that throw needs to be. Great design by the coach, but equally good execution by the players. And a true freshman corner in Renardo Green that did not get hands on Thomas and jam him at the line. There's Cam Akers on first down, flag down as he reverses field and gets taken down by Trajan Bandy. We'll have to check the marker. What's that old saying in football? If you're even, you're leaving. Mm -hmm. That was Thomas. He got even. He was leaving. And I like the fact that they went after the true freshman corner, right? You put the tight end there, take the safety out. Let's go attack. Attack a true freshman. decision to make as Bandy brought down Akers after a gain of maybe a yard or so but he's going to take the penalty and make it first and 15 rather than second and nine. On both teams we've seen guys that are extended out on the perimeter receivers tight ends running backs their job is to make sure with those officials am I on the line of scrimmage and you get that confirmation or the official tells you to get on that's the second time we've seen it both teams. Now Miami changing up their defense with two deep safeties. Blitz coming, Hornybrook. Bullets one underneath to Gavin. And he comes up about a yard shy of the first down, but we've got another flag down in the offensive backfield. So a sloppy start for Florida State. Another penalty on Trey McKinney. And in the scouting report for Alex Hornibrook, it's not go backwards. That's where they are right now, though. Well, the big thing for him is every time he's on the field, this offense moves the ball and scores points. Keep doing that. That's my number one suggestion. <laughs> wow. And then That's deep. I, I would say <laughs> force Miami to stop Tamari on Terry and make sure that you're getting the ball to him early and often. And then listen, he gets away with some stuff. He's not this game manager everyone thinks. He lives on the edge a little bit and he gets away with it. Be careful against this defense. Has all day to throw here and is able to drop one into the sideline to Gabe Neighbors. Well, that's going to dig Florida State out of a hole and make it second down and very manageable, a gain of 18. We just talked about how important it is to get Tamari on Terry involved. Well, they put him on the outside there. He takes away two guys, and that's what allowed that tight end all that room on that corner route. Akers met by Shaq Quarterman right at the line and another late flag thrown behind the play. We've already had four penalties called against Florida State. Personal foul, hands in the face, deep miss. No. That's the first penalty called against Miami as Jade Silvera has called for hands to the face. You could tell emotions high for both teams. Some mental mistakes. Both teams have some young players on each side of the football. Got to find a way to settle in, lock your mind into what your job is to do, and go focus on doing that. Lining up to take the direct snap is Akers, but now a flag thrown again as Hornybrook motions into the backfield. First start, offense number 55. Five-yard penalty, first down. It's the freshman guard, Dante Lucas. And let me say this, because I'm sure everyone's booing number 55, Dante Lucas, but when you go to a Wildcat, it's now a new voice for those offensive linemen to hear when it comes to cadence, right? And they're used to hearing one, and just that little changeup could throw anybody off, let alone a true freshman. It's coming. Hornybrook avoids a sack. Can't get away, though. Eventually, the pocket collapses, and the Canes get him back inside the 30-yard line. Jonathan Garvin, Jonathan Ford were both there for Miami. Oh, 
Now, great blitz design. Quarterman just timed it up perfect with Pinckney, and Pinckney waits just at the right moment to find the seam, and he's the one that first gets hands on Alex Hornibrook. Second and 25. Akers. Makes a tackle at the line, but eventually stumbles forward for only about three yards. Greg Rousseau tripped him up. And now Akers got a little something to say after the play is over. I'm telling you, I think it's between Tamarion, Tandy, Terry, and Bandy. Watch them. Two fierce competitors going at it. I told you from the beginning. Trajan Bandy is not going to back down to Tamari on Terry. It's going to be a fun matchup to watch. Third down and a mile. Another sack for Miami as Hornybrook ends up buried by Greg Rousseau. Rousseau had three sacks last week in the win against Pitt, and he's all over Hornybrook in the first quarter here. Look at Rousseau. They line him up over the center. They get him on the guard, and then his athleticism and strength on the delayed blitz by the linebacker, you put the defensive end inside to allow the athleticism and space one-on-one -on -one against that guard. Wobbly kick from Martin. Osborne on a fair catch at about the 35-yard line as Miami's defense in control early. Hired as the Cubs manager on October 24th. You work for ESPN. End up at a dugout or on the sideline somewhere, I'll tell you. DJ Dallas, he dives out to about the 38-yard line for a gain of three for UM. Bob Oshusen here with Dan Orlovsky, obviously the future head coach at Connecticut. <laughs> Let's just slow assuming, that. Let's slow I'm just that assuming that that, you know, your, your work for ESPN. People will take that and run with it. Getting to know how famous you are, and at some point you're going to find your way to the sideline. I, I, I just enjoy my time with you right. way too much to ever go do that. Well, you're going to take me along as your team nutritionist. And we'll go 0-12. <laughs> Aaron Williams underneath Revan Jordan. Right at the first down line to gain. And it looks like forward progress is going to give you a first down. Ah, I love that play design. They had Brevin Jordan in the slot. They motioned over. The motion guy went out. Jordan stemmed inside to create some space for him on a linebacker. And then really the best thing was he got his head around and caught a difficult football. Beautiful. I think Brevin Jordan's the key to this offense. I really do. The more times. You can find ways to get him the ball, the better and more positive things that'll happen for your offense. This is a play action formation for them that they love. There is the play action fake. Screen to DJ Dallas again. This time, Florida State was ready for it. Amari Gaynor all over DJ Dallas. This offense, though, looks different with Jaron Williams in there as opposed to Nikosi Perry last week. I would say Jaron Williams does a better job of getting the ball out, and he uses his feet, or he needs to use his feet a little bit more, but he's doing a much better job of seeing things pre-snap and how they allow him to play better post-snap. He's super talented. I think he's got a bright future, and I do believe Dan Enos is going to do a nice job in the years to come. To the line of scrimmage it's going to be third and long and guys Manny Diaz made it very clear that they want Williams to be their quarterback talent wise he is the guy there were just some issues with this preparation leading up to the Pittsburgh game he quote didn't prepare to their standard and so sitting out that game to start was definitely a form of punishment and I asked him about it he said I learned a lot from that Pittsburgh game and I realized that my decisions and this team it's bigger than me it's not about me or how I feel or what I have going on it's got to be about the team and putting my brothers before everything else Keep in mind, not only did Jaron Williams win the job over to Kosi Perry, he won it from Tate Martell, who was a former five-star recruit player of the year that transferred from Ohio State. And now flags down at the snap as the play clock wound all the way down. The middle game, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. I mean, this is one of the worst third down offenses in college football. 
the last thing you want to do is get a controlled penalty, something that you can control because of a lack of focus. It really started from the play call getting in late, then the motion, and then the quarterback not seeing the clock, and you're in the third and 13. And let's see what Dan Enos, the offensive coordinator, sends in for third down and long. Williams, tipped ball, incomplete. So it will be a punt for the Canes, as Hamza Nasruddin was in on the play. The ACC defensive back of the week. He had 17 tackles in last week's win against Syracuse. And he's six foot four and that six foot four frame came into play right there they played a little man to the boundary zone to the field and he got his hand on a little camp chancellor type player well, you said when you watched this florida state team on tape that the length of their defense was something that really stood out to you they they play with 11 guys and they six of them are six four or bigger and it they put the guys in the right place that are really long. They put them in the right places where the length can get effective. Put them to the field where that extra inch or two can come into play to bat a ball away. We saw it there. Lou Headley with a short kick that takes a sideways hop and eventually rolls dead at the Florida State 26 yard line. 7 0 Miami. Lofsky. Allison Williams back at one of the great scenes and great traditional rivalry games in college football. Miami and Florida State late first quarter and it has been a sputtering start for the Florida State offense penalties have hurt them more than anything there's a quick slant DJ Matthews picks up about eight Irvin Hall brought him down mentioned DJ Matthews has got to be the guy that if Miami's going to commit to Terry he's got to be the guy to step forward on it Kendall Bryles loves that up-tempo offense. There's Matthews again. This time he heads backwards instead of forwards. Again brought down by Hall, but we've got another penalty marker thrown on the far side of the field. We know energy is such a big part, the emotion, such a big part of a rivalry game, and different messaging for that point on both sidelines. For Miami, they want them to continue to play fast and bring that energy, while Willie Taggart told Florida State, specifically the offensive linemen, you guys need to calm down, settle in, lock in, and focus. It's somewhat reflective of their two personalities, isn't it? It seems like Willie Taggart's a little more laid back. Clock down to five. And as Hornybrook tries to get his team set. Kalen Labor up the middle. About three yards short of a first down. Third down and three with a minute to go in the opening quarter. Third down and three is a much better situation for Florida State offensively because what they do best is run the football and they can still call runs here. I'd be shocked if there was not a slant thrown on this play. Barney Brook over the middle, reaching out to make the catch for the first down is DJ Matthews. Good job. They brought Matthews in motion. Get the press off if there is some, and then a quick little slant on the inside. Horny Brook, good ball placement. The quick hitter out to the edge. Keith Gavin makes the catch. Talk to Kendall Bryles about the pace of this offense. And he said to us yesterday, well, it's okay. It's not as fast as I'd like, but we're not bad. They run a play every 21 and a half seconds. And up the middle, Laburn is close to another first down. That should take us to the end of the first quarter. Although, with the pace that that guy runs on offense, maybe not. They might get another snap off. They're set at the line. The clock goes to zero, and they will blow the quarter dead. The fourth fastest offense in college football, trying to get some momentum going. Down seven. This is the ACC on ABC, set for the start of the second quarter, with the Canes up. Right, well, let's watch these illegal formations. So watch the receiver, Gavin, as he throws his left hand up. Okay, he's trying to tell the official, I'm on, now look at the official. His right hand is up going, no, you're behind the line of scrimmage. Receiver, player, if you're going to confirm with the official that you're on, you gotta pay attention to, tell, to, to have him tell you if you are or not. Akers starts off the second quarter 
by lowering the boom and picking up the first down. A gain of five. Cam Akers was largely invisible in the first quarter. Only had two carries for three yards. Not here. Watch a physical player dip the shoulder, dip everything to run through Al Blades. Hornybrook. Long throw out to the numbers. He was able to find Trey McKitty for a gain of four. That was a really nice job by McKitty right there, playing smart. Saw the soft spot in the zone, made sure that he turned with his eyes to the quarterback and made the defender go through him to get to the football. Akers lines up to take the direct snap again with the call on the wild cam here in Tallahassee. And he's going to go right up the middle and get caught right at the line. No gain. It'll be third down. And about six, Michael Pinckney was there to shut down Cam Akers. Last third down, we saw Florida State motion DJ Matthews and then throw the slant to him. Miami's playing so much man-to-man -man coverage on third down. If I'm Florida State, I'm expecting some zone here potentially and trying to get a triangle in the middle of the field. Horny Brook thought about a swing pass to Akers, and instead he's going to run for it. Dives for the first down marker, and he's got it. They built their trying in the middle of the field, and just Alex Hornybrook right producing. No one's there. I got a feel. Let me find this open space. Now it's Akers bottled up behind the line and thrown down. Draymond Hill gets a tackle for loss. I really think that Florida State can get to some of their RPO game, their run pass option game. Spread your receivers out and force that conflict defender in the slots to make a decision. Here comes Hornybrook motioning back into the backfield into a pistol formation in front of Akers. And he's out of the pocket again. Slings one down the sideline. Climbing the ladder and making the catch is Terry. Pick up for Tamari and Terry. That's so well done by the quarterback, Alex Hornybrook. And then watch Terry. He turns, goes down the sideline. Quarterback running to him. Look at the strong hands. Catch the ball, extend it from your body, and keep it secured with both strong hands. Hornybrook off to an 8-for-9 start for 79 yards. We've got an injured cane down. Looks like Michael Pickney. Michael Pinckney was the cane that was shaken up, but he's over on the Miami sideline. And Allison reports that he is fine and is already set to check back in the game. First and ten, though, for Florida State. Their best drive so far. A reverse. E.J. Matthews. He wants to throw. Green grass out in front of him, and he'll high-step it down the sideline as the Canes had pass options covered downfield, but Matthews picks up six. This is pretty sweet. They try to throw back to Alex Hornybrook. He streaks down the field, covered, and he starts to wave to DJ Matthews. Like, no, 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 don't throw it to me. Just run. Pretty good. Kendall Bryles will dial up gimmick play after gimmick play. There's your matchup right there at the top. Matthews. They block up the screen. He's got a first down. Stood up by Gervin Hall at the nine-yard line, but it's first and goal for Florida State. It's a nice job by Hornybrook. Right at the last second, the safety went over to the side where Tamari on Terry was, and so they have it built in. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, throw it there. If not, throw it out to the screen where we have a little bit of a numbers help. Hornybrook on the slant. Incomplete. Trying to find McKitty. And that one went right through his hands. Again, Gervin Hall lurking in coverage. Second down and goal. Good discipline by Gervin Hall not falling for the pump out to the bubble and staying true to his rules. Horty Brook had hit on seven straight before that incompletion. Akers. Nowhere to go. Shaq Quarterman, a tackle for loss back to the 14-yard line. That's a loss of about five, and now it's third down and goal. Look at Quarterman. No hesitation. Outstanding first step and beats the tackle outside 
to make that tackle for loss. And if you're third and long here for Florida State, you got to imagine that you're going to have two safeties by Miami. I'd like to put one of those safeties in a bind and send two verticals his way. Five-man rush. Horny Brook again is brought down behind the line. Another sack for the Canes. A moment ago, it was first and goal at the nine. Now, it's going to be a sizable field goal attempt for Florida State just to get on the board as Amari Carter came through on the safety blitz. Had the right play call, too. They did exactly that. They sent two guys to the field safety, and he drifted inside, and they got a guy wide open on the front pylon, but the beautiful design by Manny Diaz gets Amari Carter on a sack. Ricky Aguayo has struggled, to say the least, this year, especially at home. Only 58%, four of nine on the season. This one from 37 to try to get the Knolls on the board. That one's good. 7-3 Kings. He was on the Knoll sideline to Miami when it seemed like every single year this game carried national championship implications for one of these teams, if not both. What do you think has to happen for both these programs to get back to that level? Oh, no, I can answer it for both teams, really. Um, you have to fight, recruit big guys up front and then develop those big guys up front. And that comes down to the head coach and the recruiters, but also the strength staff. And then let's be honest, both of them got to find their quarterback. They, neither of them have had the star quarterback since those glory days. It'll be a touchback. Miami out to the 25-yard line. And our first chance to say hello to Cassidy Hubbard. Hi, Bob. And now for today's All-State Mayhem moment, number 16, Notre Dame hosting Virginia Tech. 24 seconds left in the half. Irish at the one, and Jafar Armstrong coughs it up. And Divine Diablo takes it all the way back for the 98-yard fumble return. They're all tied up at 14 at the half. Bob Dan, back to you. Well, that is a surprising score to say the least. Notre Dame and Virginia Tech tied at 14. Virginia Tech's been playing better ever since they made a switch at quarterback. I'll tell you when it's South Bend, man. They don't want to hear it. Williams, blockers out in front of Brevin Jordan. And those picks and rubs at the line of scrimmage have worked well so far. The screen game has been effective for UM. Well, they, it, they called it at the right time, too. They got into an empty formation. It was really two screens on either side. Florida State blitzed the young quarterback, Jaron Williams. And it was just a nice design by Dan Enos, taking some pressure off easy throws. Those are called, hey, you don't have to think as a quarterback. You could just catch it and throw it out there. Good design on first down. There's a shot over the middle. Osborne can't hold on. So it will be second down and 10. And it's number 15 SMU taking on number 24, 7 and 1 Memphis. It's Saturday Night Football presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's tonight at 7.30 Eastern on ABC. That's a league that has not normally had the chance to take center stage and become a focal point game. Big opportunity for both of those programs in that conference. Points, 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 and points. To me, like, that game's going to come down to what defense, because they're both in at the bottom quarter of the NFL, uh, college football, what defense can make a stop in the red zone. Blitz. Williams had to hurry it and missed Harlan. Hampson Nasraldine came untouched off the edge. And one of the, that play is the perfect example we talked about for Jaron Williams that there's some tells by this defense for Florida State. Where guys line up, you should know what's happening. Nasrul Dean, the safety, is down there in the slot at the line of scrimmage. You've got to anticipate that pressure. Third down and 10. Played a ton of cover three so far. One safety in zone. You've got to find attack the seams, attack the hashes. They're showing an all out blitz, and they'll back out of it. Williams buying time. Sliding, throws one over the middle that should have been picked off. Akeem Dent jumped the route, had it right in his hands, and couldn't hold on. Played cover three again on him, and then some, some pressure. 
as a quarterback, you move that much, third and long, find a check down, throw it away. Keem Dent just playing in the middle of the field, sees the receiver, Mike Harley trying to drift. Catch the ones they throw, you defenders. Whistles before the punt by Headley. And it looks like a timeout was called. Uh, so Florida State calls a timeout before the punt. We'll step aside. Football playoff top 25 presented by Allstate. And this is Dan Orlovsky's first miserably incorrect attempt huh. at the top sure six. Don't hear about that. <laughs> Ohio I almost State's. put Penn State in the top four. Ohio State's number one. Line drive kick, DJ Matthews. All the way back inside his own 10-yard line, lets it bounce into the end zone and buys himself 10 extra yards as a result. And the timeout pays off because why did they call timeout? Look, let's count them off. So Florida State defends you two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then your return it gives you 10. But look, Williams is standing right up there by himself, uncovered. So that's a good job by them of going to get that timeout. Willie Taggart sprinting down the sidelines. It pays off. Not only did you have the potential of that ball getting thrown to that gunner, but then it equals a touchback, right? So really good in the moment coaching by Willie Taggart. A good job on special teams by the head coach from the sideline and a smart play by DJ Matthews on special teams as a returner, uh, catching the ball inside his own 10 yard line. Empty backfield for Hornibrook. Screen to Terry. About a two yard gain. That play is, right there is made by Romeo Finley. Number 30, who's a kind of a hybrid nickel linebacker player for them. He got outside of the blocker, and that didn't allow Terry to have a lane. Horny Brook almost threw a pick. Miscommunication with his receiver. And Bubba Bolden was sitting right in the middle of the field, and he would have had maybe a house call if he could have picked that one off. Well, Bubba Bolden's anticipating because of the formation here. Probably comes an RPO. And you heard me tell you, slants, slants, and slants. And there's miscommunication by the quarterback and receiver. Cam Akers, six carries for minus one yards. So the best player has been a zero factor so far for Florida State. So we're having a problem with our referee microphone on the field, but the false start on Florida State makes it third down. After their seventh penalty, third down and 13. They've seen so much man to man on third down today. Got these guys, these athletes up in the middle. Hornybrook, pressure coming. Ball batted around that middle screen. Out there for Trayshawn Harrison. Trajan Bandy on a corner blitz. And it's going to be a punt for Florida State deep in their own end. Are you surprised at how little Cam Akers has been able to impact this game so far. Absolutely. Because here you get in the third and longs, you get some athletes, you're playing two-man, and Bandy's able to use his athleticism and space to come underneath that screen. But Cam Akers, a guy that they want to get 25 touches to last week, he had 13 touches in the Wildcat last week, and it was all productive. So it's an easy answer. He's the best player on the field for you. Make sure he gets the ball a bunch. Osborne with a fair catch. And a flag comes out. That might be kick-catch interference. Looks like they didn't give the one-yard buffer to Osborne. That'll be a 15-yard penalty. And McDonald was down on coverage. Two years. Kick. Coming from the spot of the foul. A net 23-yard punt when you factor in the penalty. BC Junior lightweight title. The champ, Miguel Burchelt, defends his belt for the sixth time against former WBA super featherweight champion Jason Sosa. The main event, 10.30 Eastern from Carson, California on ESPN. The ESPN app and ESPN Deportes. So tune in for that. Great field position for Miami, starting at the 40-yard line with a handoff to DJ Dallas, and he picks up five and a half. 
Nice job by that Miami offensive line. Just a quick hitting trap, taking advantage of some of the aggressive play from the Florida State defensive line. If this team could run the ball relatively well on first down, not gashing, but well, it will help Jaron Williams play so much more efficiently. Quick hitter, Mark Pope. Gets to the sideline. Gets dragged down at about the 27-yard line. As will Dean made the stop, but it's an eight-yard game and a UM first down. Love the play call. They got Gainer, the big outside linebacker. They saw him walk out in space. They motion over. He comes off the edge, and you replace him with that little bubble. But that's why running the ball on first down is so important. Then you get the second and five, and throwing the bubble is justifiable. Play action. Aaron Williams going to take a shot towards the goal line. And it's incomplete. He wanted Brevin Jordan. Sante Samuel got back in coverage as we've got our athletic trivia question. Name the last Miami head coach to win their first game against Florida State. I know it. You do? That's a Very confident. That's a layup. We're going to talk about one of the all-time great American success stories. It's Manny Diaz and his family tree. We'll get to that coming up in just a little bit. Second down at 10. Play action again. Under pressure as Williams avoids a sack. Curls one down the sideline incomplete. It'll be third down and 10. Thomas, the intended receiver. Nice job by Jaron Williams escaping the pocket there. Mentioned it the last third down. Florida State has something against you right now. They love playing third, cover three. Corners, a deep third, safety in the middle of the field, zone droppers underneath. I'd like to see Miami give Jaron Williams a ball to the sideline. Give him an easy read, throw the out route, throw a comeback. If not, check it down to a tailback. You have a good shot at points here. We've had plenty of third and longs. Another one here. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up. Williams lost the football. It's on the deck, and it looks like the Knowles have recovered. Nasrul Dean found the loose ball as Jaron Williams. That internal clock just never went off. And UM gives it up. Watch Nasrul Dean come right up 55. Levon Donaldson fell off, and then Gaynor on the edge. Jaron Williams just holds on too long, and then Gaynor's effort gets that sack, and then the fumble, and who picks it up? 23, Nazar Dean. How many packs of the football can a quarterback have with that pocket collapsing where he knows this has to get out? Well, listen, you're only going to live in third and ten so long, and as a quarterback, this is part of being young. Get the ball out, get the ball out, get the ball out. We talked about it. Listen, you had points. Just make sure the ball is one read, get it down to a check down, and the check down's wide open. There's an errant snap, and Hornybrook has to cover up back at his own 24-yard line. Did that hit the motion man, Cameron McDonald, the tight end, as he came right in between Hornybrook? And the center, Baby and Johnson. Yeah, they motion McDonald over, and then his job, watch McDonald, 87, as he crosses from the right to the left. You gotta wait till that snap clears you, and then you go. That's on McDonald. Akers finds a lane. The first big play for Cam Akers. And now it's third down and manageable as he gets all the way out across the 35 to about the 39-yard line. He picked up 14. See, coaching's not that hard, man. Give it to your best players. Good things will happen. Nice patient there by patience by Cam Akers there. So Florida State offensively living in third and long. Find 15. You're going to have two high safeties and man-to-man -man coverage. And a blitz. The crosser is McKitty. And now what is the decision for Willie Taggart on fourth down and one on his own side of the 50 as McKitty gets up with a limb. 
and the sideline wants McKinney to go down. He was trying to hop off the field, and all of the coaches on the Florida State sideline were waving at him, no, get down, and maybe that's to buy a free time. Look at all the guys at the bottom of our screen right here, okay? As they're trying to tell McKinney, when he's trying to be tough, right? I'm gonna come off, watch him, no, 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 no. Get down, get down, get down. Take advantage of that rule, and to your point, Bob, give us a free timeout. How about this decision by Willie Taggart to go for it on his own side of the 50 in the first half? I, I, I don't like the decision, and I don't like the formation that they're in. I would have loved to have six get the ball on a wildcat. Instead of takers right up the middle on a dive. I don't think he got there. Trayvon Hill comes out with the football. And it doesn't matter if it's a fumble recovery or if they got him stopped after a half-yard gain. Either way, Miami's going to end up with the ball. It looks like the Canes have a stop on downs as we go back to Cassidy. Thanks, Bob. This Drive It Forward update is brought to you by CarMax at number 8, Georgia, and number 6, Florida, Jacksonville. After a controversial completion, Jake Fromm runs Dominic Blaylock out to the left flat for the score, capping off a 10-play drive with the Bulldogs up 10-0. Bob, Dan, back to you. All right, Cassidy, thanks very much. So the decision backfires for Florida State with 6.01 to go in the first half. And when I said six, I meant three. I wanted Cam Akers to get the snap, almost a direct wildcat formation to let him kind of gain a gap. They brought the chains out to measure just to make sure, and it's not even close. They've had so much success when they put Cam Akers and Laburn on the field at the same time and ran a zone read, a counter toss, because it forces the defense to defend another gap. I didn't like the fact that they just lined up like they have a dominant offensive line, snapped it, and just ran a basic run play up the middle when the strength of Miami's football team defensively is their front four, really their front seven. I didn't love the play call or the decision. Big opportunity for the Canes now. They start once again in plus territory. DJ Dallas to the line of scrimmage for no gain. Mari Gaynor made another stop. Also in the middle was Robert Cooper. Big number 91 there. He was a basketball player in high school until the football coach came to him and said, son, you are going to be the number one recruit in all of football if you stay with football. I said, look, I, you have to talk to my mom about yeah, letting me play he's football. Stud, man. Well, you know what? <laughs> the coach talked to his mom, and here he is as the nose tackle for Florida State, as he was a four-star top 100 recruit. Another blitz. Long throw for Williams to the sideline, intended for Mark Pope. And it looks like a check that D. Wiggins, he makes the catch. And picks up six, so it'll be third down and four. Good long throw by Jaron Williams and a nice job by D. Wiggins of getting up out underneath that ball and kind of going down to the ground to secure it. I think you could pop a run here if you're Miami. I really do. You've gotten so much cover three drop by Florida State's defense. I think you could try to pop a quick hit or a trap right at the middle here. Blitz picked up. Long throw. Harley along the sideline. He's got it. Another deep shot for Jaron Williams. Strikes Pater. And it's first and goal Miami at the six. They got Florida State playing them in man-to-man. -man. Nice job by Jaron Williams. Drifting away from some pressure. And then the throw to Harley. Late hands. Late hands to go extend for that football. Didn't allow Dent to come and make a play on it. DJ Dallas at the goal line. He's in for a Miami touchdown. Beautiful 
job by the left side of that offensive line creating that hole for DJ Dallas. This is one of the worst teams in America when it comes to taking turnovers and turning it into points. And they stop it right there, get the turnover, big touchdown. Camden Price adds the point after. And Miami has a 14-3 lead. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. For DJ Dallas. And a 14-3 lead for UM. Last season, the road team took a big lead, and the home team came back in dramatic fashion. As it was 27-3 at one point last year, Florida State at Miami until an avalanche of Kane's takeaways in the second half turn the tide. Now it's going to have to be Florida State as the home team to try and pull off the comeback down 11 as we answer our athletic trivia question. All right, Dan thought he knew the last Miami head coach to win their first game against Florida State. I'm saying it's Larry Coker. Let's reveal, just to prove to you that we don't give the analyst the answer before the game starts, dead wrong. Randy Shea. Are you guys sure that's right? I, I, yeah. think, I think we checked it. Are, you're calling the truck in. Yeah, I just... I, really? Yeah. Just because you were wrong, you're assuming they didn't do their work? Totally thought I had that locked. Mm. Interesting. Larry Coker was a great coach for Miami, though. Well, they've been looking exactly. for... Since the early 2000s, they have been looking for answers to run their program and haven't found them. Hornybrook under pressure. The Miami pass rush gets home again. Rousseau and Ford. Garvin there as well, the fourth sack. This is what I'm confused about right now for Florida State offensively. You got a great running back. Miami is playing two high safeties on almost every first down. When defenses play two high safeties, there's one less person that is committed to stopping the run. It should be relatively simple of getting Cam Akers the football in your run game on early downs. And now it's second down at 20. There's a run to Akers, and he is met by Michael Pinckney. And guys, our, our Kendall Bryles was talking to Alex Hornibrook about needing to run more zone stuff to get Akers out in space, and he's such a good back, and obviously he's ran behind some, some pretty porous offensive lines, right? But he's such a vocal leader. That's a change that really Tigert has seen from him this year. And on the sidelines here, he's been frustrated. He came over and told his offensive line, like, you guys are not being physical enough at the line of scrimmage. We need to get going. Cam Akers has nine carries for 16 yards, and now it's third and 17. And it's going to be a conservative play call just to buy some real estate for the punt group. Hill brings down Akers, and I would assume you'd probably call timeout. College football will be talked about as well. They'll also preview some of tonight's action. That's the big one in the American. Comes up as soon as we're done here in Tallahassee. That's frustrated running back, and that's a happy group of Canes fans that have made their way up to Tallahassee and have seen their defense dominate down the first half. Yeah, the defense has been outstanding. Now, they've been helped a little bit by Florida State's struggles or lack of wanting to run the football, and it's allowed what Manny Diaz and the Miami defense do the best is play third down defense, and that's what they're, Florida State is almost allowing them to do it. Walk-on punter, Tommy Martin, gets away a wobbly kick. His heads to the sideline and is going to be out of bounds once again in Florida State territory. Again, it's great field position for Miami. I love what DJ Dallas is doing right now for this football team. So first of all, third down, watch the tailback as he goes across the line of scrimmage, pick up pressure. That allows Jaron Williams to drift. Without that block, that ball doesn't get off. And then what does a good play caller do? The very next play, I'm going to reward my tailback for doing the dirty work. And that's a really big moment for Miami because this is a program that's trying to rebuild, right? You get your best players to do the, the stuff that people don't notice and then reward them. Third straight possession that Miami begins in Florida State territory. They're going to throw with Williams again. Middle screen dropped. Oh, DJ Dallas was going to be able to slip past that aggressive Florida State front as Robert Cooper thought he might have been able to make a play. It'll be second down attempt. 
Cooper. <laughs> I'm looking at those gloves. These work for Odell. How come they didn't work for me? Uh, he's watched way too many receivers do that. <laughs> Watch this guy right here, comes pressure. There is the blitz. It's picked up again, Williams, long throw to the sideline. K.J. Osborne, he's got it. A pickup of 18 more for the Canes. There's those tells, pressure comes. Right when Osborne turns his head, Jaron Williams not only cuts that rock loose, but throws it up to a point where he's high in a way where only Osborne could go get it. I love that. There's one of those tells. Here comes the pressure. Let's go beat that cover two blitz. And there was DJ Dallas again to pick it up. And there's DJ Dallas being rewarded after the blitz pickup with a carry on the next play for Miami, but no gain. Cedric Wood got him around the ankles and brought him down right at the line of scrimmage. And I like the run call because if you're Miami right now and there's a buck 40 on the clock, the number one objective is score points. You're in field goal range. Number two, Florida State doesn't get this football back. So it's a managing of play call and also allowing this clock to drip down a little bit. Man to man across the board. There's your matchup with Brevin Jordan. They go the other way, looking for Osborne, incomplete. Blanketed by Samuel. So that stops the clock with a minute 15 and makes it third down and 10. I just think your, your tight end matchup, if they put a linebacker or a safety out on Brevin Jordan and it's man to man, it's it's an easy read. He's the elite or pre the, the, the athlete that is going to be the most difficult matchup. That The ball has to go to Brevin Jordan in that man to man situation. If you get a stop here for Florida State, you also have to be ready, I would think, to call a timeout. Absolutely. They've got two remaining. And you got to be really good with your play call here. Like I mentioned, you're in somewhat field goal range. You got man to man across the board as the motion comes. Look for a corner breaking route. Again, it's a blitz. Williams extends the play and does a good job to hoist it to the sideline and throw it away and keep his team in field goal range. Amari Gaynor came through. Nice job by the young quarterback of not taking a bad play and making it worse. You could be so caught up in the moment of trying to force something there where you make a mistake. Now, we said they were in field goal range for most teams, even for them. But even when in field goal range, the Canes have been terrible attempting field goals. Manny Diaz knows it. They're going to go for it on fourth and ten rather than trust their kicking game. And Williams to the sideline, makes the nose pay. Mike Harlier checked that Brevin Jordan with a gain of 13 and a first step. There's the guy. There's the guy when you're going to force man-to-man -man as a defense. Watch Jordan as he outside releases, stem, a little bit of an inside look, and then the athleticism to go up and make the catch. I'm just telling you, in the situations where you can anticipate a defense playing man-to-man -man coverage, there's not a lot of teams in America who can cover Brevin Jordan. DJ Dallas driven back. Call timeout if you're Miami. exactly what the Canes will do. 40 seconds to go in the first half. It'll be second down and 10. And Miami with a 14-3 lead. Last week against Pitt, they could not move the football. They could not make a third down conversion. They could not get in the end zone <laughs> until they brought Jaron Williams in late with the blitz pickup as effective as it's been. He has been a different level quarterback this week than Nikosi Perry was last week. Yeah, he's a talented player, and I think what you're seeing today is some confidence come out to play for him. You're seeing him trust the people that are around him. And to your point, DJ Dallas has done a nice job in this offensive line, right, of picking up some pressure. And they have people that are matchup favors for them. Brevin Jordan leading the way. And so I would look for him down in the red zone as well. If Florida State is going to play any kind of man or a combo coverage, 
I would want to see Brevin Jordan run away from people, and it's also an easy read for your young quarterback. I don't want to see him on the sideline, that's for sure. Florida State only has 88 yards of total offense in the first half. They've been completely shut down by the Miami defense. And the Canes looking to extend their lead. All day to throw again for Williams. Flips one of the left flat wide open was Wiggins. And he just floated it over his head. Surprising miss from Jaron Williams. They got to go back to a play like that, though. Florida State played their quarters, their combo coverage, and the safety Akeem Dent had hopped up or jumped up on a receiver. Man, he had Mike Harley wide open in the back of the end zone. They can get back to something like that again. down and 10 in the red zone. Another Florida State blitz. Williams hoists one into the end zone. A jump ball. Flags out. Jeff Thomas, the intended receiver. Did he push Asante Samuel? I mean, that should be offensive pass interference. And to be honest with you, it's a great play. Interferes, offense number four, 15 yard penalty, third down. Watch Thomas right here as Asante Sim is going up to make the play, the show. But that's a good penalty by Thomas because that, with Asante Samuel's ball skills, that's not only a pick, that could be a pick completely the other way. So a nice job by Thomas here. If you're Miami, I'm going to kick out a screen or something, try to get a screen against this soft defense. Let the clock bleed down and kick your field goal. And there's the crossing route to Brevin Jordan. Breaks a tackle, gets down the sideline, and gets stood up inside the 15. They'll wind the clock down, and you would think on fourth down, Manny Diaz would call the final timeout with a few seconds on the clock. He's going to wait until this field goal attempt is the final play of the half. Here's your timeout. And the Canes will look to make this a full two touchdown lead at halftime coming up this week on Sunday NFL countdown Randy Moss ranks the best catches from this week's college football action plus an inside look at the NFL's top ranked defense with the twin brothers who hold down a perfect Patriot secondary and Dak Prescott one on one it's week nine it's countdown 10 a.m. on ESPN tomorrow morning Patriots got a good one Sunday night Baltimore and Lamar Jackson who the people of this conference know well. It was a really, really good two-minute drive by Miami's offense. Really well oper operated, managed. When they needed the plays, they went to the right people. Really good growth by their young quarterback as well. Camden Price made his only attempt of the season when he knocked through a 22-yarder against Pitt, replacing Bubba Baxa as the short field goal kicker. As Baxa struggled, and this one's right down the middle. A dominant first half performance for Miami. They lead Florida State seven. Game, throw the football downfield and get after the quarterback. They've done. Alex Hornibrook is in there at quarterback to start the second half. Will the run game go anywhere for Florida State? Nice spin move by Akers, but he picks up a yard. Penalties. It's the first thing Willie Taggart said when I asked him about getting Cam Akers going. He said, we're in too many long yardage situations. We're backed up because of pre-snap issues. So we can't do the things we want to do offensively, which is run the ball with Cam Akers. So they have to do a better job of putting themselves in positive yardage positions and picking up for the first down so they can use their tempo. 
Well, there goes Akers. That's the first time he's been able to crease the Miami defense out of that Wildcat or Wild Cam formation. Amari Carter brought him down. Beautiful job of just Cam Akers hugging those blocks, getting downfield and not trying to dance anywhere in between holes. There he is again. And this time he's swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. He picks up about a yard once again. It's Jordan Miller. And Aruka in on the stop as well for UM. Commitment to get Akers the football to start off the third quarter for Florida State. They get one 16-yard run, but now after back-to-back -back carries, it's going to be third down and 10. And this is where Nick Kendall Bryles needs to do something with Tamari on Terry to move him around. Miami comes with a rush. Popped up in the air and on the carry, it may have been intercepted. Bubba Bolden has the loose ball. The turnover chain's coming out on the Miami sideline. As Horny Brook tried to squeeze one into tight coverage. Holden coming off the field with a limp. He may have hurt himself during the celebration. Chain still goes on. Why not? <laughs> Chain still goes on. No team has been more prolific taking the football away for the most part over the last three years since that turnover chain became the tradition on the Miami sideline. Tipped ball off the first pass from Jaron Williams. So it'll be second down and 10 for Miami as they start another drive in plus territory. Watch DJ Ivy. He's allowed to just play underneath, kind of. No fear of getting beat deep. He gets his hands on the ball, tip, and then you see Bolden. That does not look good on that ankle. So Bolden with a limp as he gets hurt celebrating the takeaway, and now he's in the injury tent. Play action. Williams sets up a bit of screen. Picking up about two and a half yards is Brevin Jordan. So now a chance for the Florida State defense after sudden change to get a stop. I like the play call just because you, you gave the defense a lot of things to look at. Motion, a play fake, and then a screen to your best player. Not all screens hit, but they're in defenders' minds that, that they have to be conscious to it. Third down here to start this second half for Miami's offense. You've gotten so much zone on third down by my by Florida State defensively. I want to do something where I get a high low, get an underneath guy and a deeper guy to put somebody in conflict as a zone defender. Williams throws one behind the blitzer to Dean Wiggins and he dives and comes up just short of the first down. So now Manny Diaz faced with fourth and one at the Florida State 38 yard line. Looks like no hesitation. His offense stays on the field. And they want to play with tempo. They want to get right up to the line and snap it. And the official's not ready to put the ball in play yet. Why? There's no sub. They get the push. Did they get the first down? It looks like they came up short. Jaron Williams tried to sneak it. And the officials marked him a half yard shot. When the officials stepped in, yeah. when Miami tried to go quickly, you think they thought that the Canes substituted? Yeah, I do. I think that they saw a player, you know, attempt to run off and then come back on, and that hurt Miami. That, and we'll get into it, that hurt Miami's offense because when you play with tempo there, you're doing it because you feel you've got something to go to, and they've got to get in the right, right gaps defensively, and I, it hurt them. I think when a player starts to sprint to the sideline, though, it's almost like you're bluffing substitution. And it is the stop we anticipated for Florida State. We'll step aside by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. 
The Florida State Seminole student section on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using the hashtag LiveMoss student section contest. So FSU gets the stop on downs. Abushus and Dan Orlovsky, Allison Williams, just what the Knowles needed. Now can they convert offensively? That's Horny Brooks still in at quarterback. Looking to throw on first down. Checks one underneath to the tight end, Gabe Neighbors. All right, watch Mallory right here, the tight end, as he goes and starts to go off the field. Now, once he comes back on, look at this official. He thinks that is a substitution. This official is looking right at him, and that's the stoppage of play. And that stoppage of play is because of you, partner, telling us that that simulated substitution correct. is the correct job by the officials. Wildcat formation gets Florida State a first down as Cam Akers goes up the middle. And if you were upset as a Miami fan as to the reason your team didn't get a chance to snap it quickly, the rule is if you're in the process of substituting or if you execute a quote-unquote simulated substitution, one team's executing better in the crucial moments and one's not. Now Florida State lines up with Hornybrook out of the backfield, and it's going to be a throw from Cam Akers. Floats one to Gabe Neighbors. The tight end breaking tackles and gets down to the Miami 32-yard line. He picked up 19, and here comes the tempo once again for Florida State. Cam Akers is an old high school quarterback, so he can throw the football, and they love the direct snap to him. Now he's got blockers out in front. Hornybrook, one of those blockers to seal the edge. And Akers with flags down as we've got an altercation out of bounds. And again, it's Tamari and Terry and Trajan Bandy the corner. Those two have been going at it all day. And now they got to get those Canes players off the Florida State sideline. Tamari and Terry gave a big push to Trajan Bandy out of bounds. Bandy then grabbed the face mask of Tamari and Terry and yanked it violently, and that's when the flag was thrown. I'm not sure if the officials saw both or if they only got the second one. And this is a big call because this is going to greatly alter potentially the field position for Florida State as they were just about to go in the red zone. Yeah, and to me, this is this is on Trajan Bandy. This is not on Terry. All right, there are two fouls on the play by both, well, by both teams. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 15. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number two, defense. That's both their first unsportsmanlike conducts of the game. The penalty is offset. Second down. Let's take another look. I think they got it right. I think both of these guys deserve to call. At the bottom of the screen, watch them engage. This is good. This is good. Good competitive football. Terry definitely finishes a little bit here, but you see a little head swipe by Bandy and then the yank. I think there's a lot more aggression by two Bandy there than it is by 15. Well, because it was a post-play foul, the down counts, and it is first and 10. Half a 20-yard line for Florida State. Akers, backwards pass to Hornybrook. Hornybrook down the sideline. He wanted to throw it in the end zone, and all of the receivers in the end zone for the Knowles were covered up. What do we say coming to this game that Kendall Browse would dial up four trick plays, four gimmicks? We've seen two That's already. The second one already, yep, and he loves him down in the red zone. Nice job by, I would say, Miami's coaches preparing their defense for them and then the defense being ready for them in the moment. Yeah, they've been covered in both situations. Screen pass, Akers to the sideline. Looking for the pylon. He's got it. A Florida State touchdown. And all oh, did the Knowles need that.
We've got a seven-point game again. A beautiful job by Florida State's offense. You get your best player out in space. Harrison blocking. Gavin blocking. And Cam Akers. A little swing pass scores made this a seven-point game. It was a great start by their offense. Get him the ball. You see 15. Tamari on Terry trying to fire guys up. It was a really good drive after that fourth down stop, and it was because they got the football to Cam Akers. And that ball will take a hop through the end zone for a touchback for Week 9 Monday Night Football. The matchup has Dak and Zeke. And the NFC East leading Cowboys at MetLife Stadium to take on Saquon and the Giants. 8 Eastern, ESPN, ESPN Deportes, the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. And if Dak Prescott wants all that money, Dan, that I know you've been talking about on all the shows that you appear on, you know he's going to want. He's Those are the kind of games you go win. Yeah, it's the stage on Monday night. This stage right now is pretty sweet. This feels like Florida State Miami DJ Dallas nowhere to run second down and ten I think here is a play caller with you can feel some momentum in this stadium your your three play caller if you're a play caller it goes to number 13 DJ Dallas number nine Brevin Jordan or number three Mike Harley right now Pressure Avoiding the sack at least for the moment was Jaron Williams, but he ran out of time again And now it's third down and a mile Marvin Wilson Robert Cooper Corey Durden, they were all in the backfield. Well, they wanted to have DJ Dallas and Brevin Jordan on the same side. An easy read for the quarterback, Jaron Williams, but they blitzed them, kept it back in. No one there. Now you got to be really smart as a play caller here. I think there's a chance for a screen. I didn't anticipate some kind of blitz or man coverage. You can slip a screen if you catch it the right way. There is the screen. Jeff Thomas knocked out of bounds, well shy of the sticks. Avante Taylor made the stop. I think Manny Diaz was looking for a late hit out of bounds as Jeff Thomas was on the sideline and got walloped. It's fourth and four. Let's watch Thomas at the end here. He never stepped out of bounds. Yeah, no question. That's, I think a, that's legal a good hit. call, yeah. Headley to punt. Headley's kick, a sky ball to the sideline. It hops straight up in the air and takes a bit of a UM roll. Down to the Florida State 30 yard line. Only a 39 yard punt. Florida State's offense back on the field looking to tie. Feels like a Florida State Miami game. Low scoring. Hard-hitting, defensive struggle, crowd back in it, and the Knolls are down by seven. Horny Brooks swings one out to Labor. Puts his foot in the ground and makes a man miss. Oh, what a cutback by the redshirt sophomore from Virginia Beach as he shook Shaq Quarterman right down to the deck. And we've got an injured Kane on the play as well. That's Trajan Bandy. That's a starting corner for the Canes. I think Kalen Laburn enjoyed that cutback. I wouldn't want to be in the open field, running full speed. Well, while Bandy is injured, a chance to talk about an injury that Kalen Laburn had. Last year in week two, he dislocated his kneecap like a Patrick Mahomes mm -hmm. type of injury. 
On a kick return, it really shook his confidence. He looks pretty confident here. He wasn't sure he would ever play again when he was first injured. And now he is back to 100%, and that is evidence of it. And you can see, that, I mean, that plays a perfect example of the confidence, right? When you're running full speed in the open field like that, and you have the just reactionary ability to put your foot in the ground and trust that everything's going to be okay. He's become a big part of their offense, certainly because of all the touches that Cam Akers is getting and then the infusion of the Wildcat. <laughs> well, out of high school, Kalen Labron was the number one all-purpose back in America, but took a red shirt because Cam Akers was the number three overall prospect of all players in college football and wanted to preserve a year of eligibility. And here's Labron. This time, no game. That'll be third down and short. That's to Jade Silvera there on the stop. And I just think on these third down and short situations, it's it's best for Florida State to get into the Wildcat. It's what they're doing the best. You can put Cam Akers and Laburn in the backfield at the same time, and it's what's allowed their run game to be the best so far, especially in this second half. Their only third down conversions have been third and short. This one third down and about a yard and a half, and Akers is lined up to take the direct snap. He'll throw one out to Hornybrook. Hornybrook may have had a knee on the ground. He scoots down the sideline, and I guess that knee was just barely off the turf when he caught the football. Great balance by Hornybrook to make sure he wasn't down, but he scooped that ball up. Watch the right knee, the left knee. Ooh, that is really close. Through the field is a first down. The previous play is under further review. enough there to go yet yeah, actually touches I agree I mean, certainly that's why the call on the field is so important yes. right it has to be indisputable that his knee is down and if you can make an argument that all his knee does is barely brush above the turf and a very quick review at the further review the ruling on the field is confirmed So Horny Brook kept his knee up off the turf and picks up a first down as Cam Akers has another completion. That's why this Wildcat is so, I, I want to call it different for Florida State, is I don't know the last time maybe Ronnie Brown with the Miami Dolphins that there was an actual running back who could throw the football effectively out of that formation. This time it's on read for Akers. And he is met in the backfield and wrapped up, and he goes nowhere. Pat Bethel was able to make the stop. Rousseau through there as well. Rousseau's a special player. Top 10 in the country in sacks. He's talented. He's athletic. He's got an outstanding motor. And you're starting to see some of the athletic ability play itself out on the football field week after week for him. That's a false start. That'll be second down at 16. False start. Offense number 56. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Ryan Roberts heard us talking about Rousseau because he's right on his right shoulder. Kind of anticipating a big speed rush there forces that jump. Well, Ryan Roberts wasn't the only guy moving. Forty Brook. That throw grabbed by Terry at the 45-yard line. It'll be third down and 10. He picks up six. DJ Ivy made the stop. And now Trajan Bandy able to get back on the field after being shaken up earlier. Very important play. And you've gotten a ton of two high safety, man-to-man -man coverage underneath. Two things. You want a screen or an outbreaking route to take advantage of leverage. Horny Brook in trouble, and he goes down. Rousseau in the backfield again. He has been unblockable the last couple of weeks. 
They tried to cut him with the freshman Dante Lucas. They try to cut 55 on the left side. Cut him. Rousseau swipes at him. Never goes down to the ground. And Alex Hornibrook never had a chance to get that ball out. Rousseau didn't even play defensive end really in high school. He was a safety and actually a bit of a wide receiver. But when Manny Diaz saw him, he immediately reminded him of Manny Lawson, who he recruited to NC State because he was long, athletic, and could run. He came to Miami just 215 pounds, but he had to bulk up to 260. He plays now. And guys, he has really come on of late. The one thing, though, they didn't have to teach him, effort. This guy is always running to the ball. Well, another huge play on special teams. That's a shanked punt from Tommy Martin. 11 yards to the 50-yard line. Well, today's been really been about this Miami defense and their sacks. We talked about Rousseau. They put him on the inside. That gives him a two-way go on the guard. Hand swipe and totally gets to the quarterback too easily. Then the both linebackers wrap. Pinckney comes around the open seam. Ford off to one side. Easy sack on Hornibrook. It's been a nice design by Manny Diaz defensively. Brevin Jordan on the tight end screen. Out of bounds right at the 50-yard line. Inside of five minutes to go in the third quarter. Gain of a yard on first down. Um, he's got to get back to some kind of a run game here. Some of these quick hitting runs. I talked about traps. Take advantage of some of the aggressive aggressive play by Florida State's defensive line. Blitz. Underneath catch is made by D. Wiggins. And another big third down coming up. Third down and four. As once again dealing with great field position for Miami. A chance for Florida State to get a stop. Well, Florida State's defense has played pretty well so far. They put in some tough situations and third down conversions, which has hurt Miami, has hurt Florida State's defense. I think you've got to play some man coverage here and challenge the, the Miami receivers. And if I'm Dan Enos from Miami, I want to get some kind of a mesh with guys running against each other to see if you can take advantage of it. Florida State's checking the zone right now. Bring a five-man rush. Flags everywhere as DJ Dallas breaks a tackle and picks up the first down. Couple of flags thrown in the offensive backfield. Oh, offense number 51. Ten yard penalty. Third down. That's the right tackle, DJ Scaife. We'll watch Scaife on the right here. And then as this linebacker pressures and he shoots through this gap, watch him stick the left arm out there and clothesline him. If he had just stabbed him and took the, 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 the chill off of him to the quarterback, that ball would have been out. But that clothesline, that wrap, that's an easy flag for the official. Third down and 15 after the penalty. And this time it'll rush only three. Bullet throw and the pressure is broken up. Good job by Levante Taylor to read that throw up the seam. And the penalty costs Miami great field position as they start at the 50-yard line and now have to punt on their side of midfield. Second dropped interception for them defensively today as well. We saw one by Akeem Dent and Levante Taylor. Those are, you, you hope that those dropped interceptions at that field position don't come back to haunt you. And this punt down the sideline. It's going to roll all the way down inside the five-yard line and is stopped at the one by the Canes. 3-0-1 to go in the third quarter. And that time, Lou Headley with a major change of field position in UFC 244. And Madison Square Garden features the card of the year. The main event on pay-per-view as Jorge Masvidal taking on Nate Diaz in a battle of welterweight starting at 10 Eastern. Order the main card in English and Spanish. It's ESPNplus.com slash PPV. And be sure to download the ESPN app if you're watching on your mobile device. ESPN2, ESPN Deportes will have the prelims starting at 8 Eastern. Florida State has rushed for a total of 27 yards 
in this game. And they are at their own one yard line. And they're going to line up Cam Akers to take the direct snap. Straight ahead run. No gain. It'll be second down and 10 inside the one. Shaq Quarterman was there for Miami. I looked at, at this, if, if I'm Florida State offensively, Trajan Bandy, who is Miami's best corner, is not in the game right now. So I'm calling a play where if it's one-on-one -on -one coverage to Tamari on Terry, which is at the bottom of the screen, I'm throwing it there. If not, it's going to be a run play. Two deep safeties, though, for UM. Exactly. So then that should be a run if they stay in too high. It looks like they're going to go to one high. It should be one-on-one -on -one down to 15. And it just rolled a safety into the slot. There's the handoff. And wrestling his way across the five out to about the seven-yard line is Akers. Jack Quarterman made another tackle. Third down and three at the eight for Florida State. Five wide, empty backfield. Quick snap. Horny broke over the middle. Broke it up. Robert Knowles gets the pass defense that it's a three and out for the Seminoles. And they'll have to punt from about the end zone. The right play, it's the right throw, but watch, it's just going to be a little bit behind Harrison. Just on that back right shoulder. You want to throw that right on the face mask if you're Hornybrook, and that's what allowed Knowles to get that right hand slapped in there. If that ball's on the face mask, it's Harrison running away with the completion. Tommy Martin's last two punts, 23 yards, 11 yards. And now he's punting from the end zone. You'd want K.J. Osborne to move up a little bit closer with those short punts. Much better kick. Got it to midfield. Returnable for Osborne. Makes the first couple of players miss. Inside the 35. Still on his feet, down to about the 29-yard line. Again, Miami starts in plus territory after a 23-yard return. Well, tonight, it's number 15, SMU, trying to stay unbeaten against 7-1 Memphis. The last time the Mustangs won eight straight to start a season, it was the Pony Express back in 82. 7.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. How about Shane Bouchelle coming over from Texas and having the season that he is? The best offense in the American, top 10 in the country. They can throw it up and down the football field. I think this could be a play-action chance for Miami's offense. DJ Dallas takes the direct snap, so Miami with their own version of the Wildcat for three yards. Miami has missed out with terrific field position on their last three offensive drives. And now four drives in a row. Three of those four starting either in midfield or in plus territory. And that's why I think it's a good play action. They've, they've run it well. They've executed it well. I think it's a good opportunity. Quick handoff, Dallas. Another big play coming up. Third down and three. We've seen Manny Diaz be aggressive this afternoon already, going forward on fourth down. Third down and three. If your thought process is, I'm going to go for this on fourth down, you can get a, you can pop a run here. They're in this tight, snug formation where they like the quick outs and stick routes on the inside. Shoulder fake. Williams leaping and coming up short. Now, neither of these teams is in any way confident in their ability to make a field goal. This will take us to the end of the third quarter. When we come back to start the fourth, are you kicking it if you're making Diaz? No, if I'm Manny Diaz, I'm going for this. Going nice for job by my one. quarterback getting me that yard. We will start the fourth quarter with a fourth down decision for Manny Diaz. He's got the field goal. That's in college football history. They'll have their top 11 of all time Thursday at 7 on ESPN. We start off the fourth quarter with a 37-yard field goal attempt, and Price misses it. The field goal nightmares for both teams continue. It's still a one-score game. Manny Diaz didn't go for it on fourth and one, and Price can't knock it through.
wide right. Where have we heard that before? As we go back to Cassidy. Thanks, Bob. Let's take a look at one of AT&T's best performances under a minute to play. Irish down six to the Hokies. Ian Book gets in for the seven-yard touchdown to give Notre Dame the lead and the win. Book 336 yards passing, three total TDs, 21-20 the final. Guys. All right, Cassidy, thanks very much. So now it is Florida State's turn again in a one-score game. Orny Brook, he has been under siege all day by that Miami defensive line, and he goes down again. Jonathan Ford, a loss of nine. This Miami defensive line has showed up this afternoon, taking advantage of a young left side for Florida State's offensive line and just continuously pushing that pocket back. Florida State tried to be aggressive on first down, and they get bit for it. Hornybrook just shovels off a screen to Akers. Spins out to the 20-yard line. And is finally wheeled down at the 22, picked up 11. So now it's third down and eight. I've talked about number 15, Tamari on Terry a bunch. I don't think you could just put him out on the sideline right now and plan to throw him the football. You've got to do something to move him. Hornybrook. Another little shovel pass over the middle, but tumbling down was neighbors couldn't hold on to it, and there's a flag down in the offensive backfield. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 26. 15 on penalty, automatic first down. Gervin Hall at the left side, right in the middle of the screen. That, that's got to be, I mean, if that's a personal foul. It's a 15-yard penalty all the way out to the 36-yard line. Could it be targeting? The previous play is under further review. That was not called on the field, but the replay booth, if they see an indicator of targeting, they can stop play, they can take a closer look, and they can see if they want a targeting foul to be called and if this is lowering the head crown of the helmet that looks like that could absolutely be an ejection for Gervin Hall that's what I, I think it has to be if that's a personal foul because it's not like he hits him late or anything like that yeah, I mean, obviously it can be unnecessary roughness or sure. a late hit on the quarterback without it being targeting but if you hit with the crown of your helmet just the way Gervin Hall did that looked like it caught Hornybrook right under the chin with the crown of the helmet. Now, I mean, I think Hall, again, I'm trying to look at this as a player. I think Hall is a little bit unfortunate there because right as Hornybrook throws, he dips down and braces for that contact, braces for that impact. And I think Hall's target area was the chest and that two, little, that two or three inch drop like that forces that, that helmet contact, or hit to the head, shall I say. Watch as Hornybrook releases this football. You're just gonna see a little duck, a little dip right there. Now it's, it's minor, it's two or three inches. But that's a big two or three inches when there's just that contact to the helmet, contact to the head area by Hall. At the further review, there is no foul for targeting. Wow. Now, they're not taking the 15-yard penalty off, but Gervin Hall stays in the game. I, I think it was a really difficult decision, if I'm being honest. I don't think it's a late hit. I think it's more, you lean more towards targeting there than a late hit to me. But I do think that that dip by Horny Brook 
kind of muddied that picture. And again, the only way that targeting ends up being enforced is if the replay booth can 100% confirm it. That's right. Back to Cam Akers to take the direct snap. Quarterman. Silvera. Stop him after a gain of a half yard. Guys, that's a huge call that that was no targeting on Hall because his backup, Bolden, is done for the game with an ankle injury. That he sustained celebrating his interception. that they scored on. They put him out there, move him back in. Swing pass to Akers. Nowhere to go. They couldn't block it up for him. Shaq Quarterman does it again. 47 consecutive games started, the second longest active streak in FBS. He has just been a rock in the middle of that Miami defense now for the last four years. Well, great diagnosis by him. It was the same play that Florida State had scored on earlier. You bring Akers out, then bring him back in. You try to get the defense to shift with him. He never did. And then once he saw Akers go back out to that bunch, he drove to the football to force this third and long. Quarterman has been all ACC all three previous years at UF. Hornybrook, long throw, and that could have been intercepted. DJ Ivy after a ball that sailed up over DJ Matthews. Twelve and a half minutes to go, and Florida State's going to have to kick it away. Great answer by this Miami defense right after that missed field goal. Forced a quick punt by Florida State's offense. Here's Tommy Martin. Spiraling kick. Osborne from his own 26, heads backwards, gets a block, turns the corner, flag out. It'll be a block in the back, and this one will be coming back. either a block in the back or a blindside block and we'll see what the officials come up with but it looks like that's going to erase what was a 20-yard return State 17 10 and all the big plays for the most part for Miami have been made by Jaron Williams in the passing game. Yeah, I mean they took advantage of a play action pass early on and then it was really him on third down moving a little bit and finding a man matchup. Great field position again for UM. Play action for Williams looking downfield. He wants to take another shot in stride. D Wiggins touchdown. Two touchdowns. We came up with prime time. Now, to be fair, I think out of our 15 voters, we had eight that voted Dion, seven that voted Charlie Ward. He just missed, and he ends up in the honorable mention category with Derek Brooks, Warwick Dunn, 
and Fred Bolitnikoff. And you know you've got a pretty good program when two Heisman winners don't even make the honorable mention list. It's tough picking five great Florida State players. These are two of the, and only the, the hardest programs to do that yes. with, right? You're going to be wrong. I can't believe that you guys let off, left off the king of the dead leg, Peter Ward. <laughs> Shoes and Dan Orlovsky, Allison Williams, the Canes by two touchdowns now, and it's been their deep passing game that has told the story as we check in with Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Bob. Let's head to the party in Jacksonville. After Florida cut it to six, Georgia responded right back. Jake Fromm to Lawrence Cager for 52 yards. They converted a two-point conversion. Bulldogs with a 24-10 lead in the fourth. Bob, Dan, back to you. Same score. 24-10, 24-10, and both the Gators and the Knolls are looking for a fourth quarter comeback. This one for Florida State in their rivalry game with Miami. Alex Hornibrook is going to throw. And he will not get another one off. The pass protection again folds in front of Hornibrook. Jade Silvera with another UM sack. This defensive line for Miami continues to show up. How about these big plays? Miami's offense has been willing to throw the football downfield and take some shots, and Florida State has gotten nothing. And it's because they're not doing anything to move around to Marion Terry and get him some coverage off of him and into some favorable situations on the field. Laburn for a couple of yards. Would you think about going to James Blackman? At quarterback, if you're Willie Taggart, if for no other reason than Alex Hornibrook, as gutsy of a competitor as he is, he just doesn't have the arm strength to push the ball downfield and have a chance to create some of those big plays. Yeah, I get that. I think it would be the convenient thing to do that. This comes a little bit more to me about some play calling and, and stopping or staying out of third and 15 plus. Here comes the rush again, and down he goes again. Tripped up by guess who? Greg Rousseau. Four sacks for Gregory Rousseau. And eight for Miami as a team. Wow. But this is some of the simple stuff of football. If you're in an offense that is staying in third and long, the defense knows you're doing one thing. Here comes a pass. And Rousseau, another nice job by Manny Diaz of moving him inside. And he knows it's a pass. You give him a two-way go, another sack for this defensive line. Born. Returnable from the 40. And drilled after about a two yard return. Miami with a two. And we think there's a 79% chance that Clemson is going to make it through and be one of the top four teams. What do you think? I would lean a little bit higher than 79. I would put really? Clemson. I, I mean, uh, to me, they're a, almost a lock to get in too good of a team and they're not going to be really challenged by anyone well a they could lose but i'm wondering what else factors into that 21 percent of them falling short is there a scenario any scenario where clemson could be undefeated and left out no i don't think so either. the college that would be you would send a message to some conferences that would not be good if you're the playoff committee going if, if what are you you could only get in if you're undefeated in, in the SEC or that, that is or that the competition this year in the ACC doesn't matter has if been you're so bad that they are just not worthy it'll be very interesting I agree with you I don't think there's any chance of that happening as DJ Dallas has a pass go off his fingertips the officials say it was forward whistle it down the crowd thinks it might be a scoop and score but that play was blown dead as a forward pass and incomplete immediately by the officials on the field. It's forward. Look at Jaron Williams about on the 38-39, and it's just going ever so slightly forward enough. That's a forward pass. Yep. Third down and seven. In a game that's far from over. Florida State has struggled offensively all day but plenty of time to get at least two, if not three possessions possibly with your timeouts with 9.22 to go. And, and smart play calling matters here. 
your defensive line is dominating the football game. This is a, a draw, a screen, a popped run, something here. Play clock down to one. That's a delay of game. They didn't get the snap off. So now it'll be third down and 12. Middle of the game, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. I, I don't care about the penalty right now if you're Miami's offense. I'm calling a play that is going to be a basic run. It's a screen. It's a draw. I am not going to put my young quarterback in a situation where he can make a decision that hurts our football team. They'll do just that. Conservative to DJ Dallas. He still gets outside and picks up the first down. A backbreaker for the Florida State defense to allow a third down and 12 to be converted by DJ Dallas with a 16-yard run. Watch the right side of the screen. Those guys, the big fellas, get out in space. A little dip by DJ Dallas. Got Stanford Samuels to pop inside and gives them just enough to get the corner. Massive conversion for Miami when they had told you we're just going to call it and punt. And that is the first first down of the game for Miami via the run when you knew it was coming mm -hmm. and you couldn't get it stopped. Williams rifles one over the middle to Jeff Thomas. Stanford Samuels brings him down in the red zone a gain of 26. And that's the same play that Williams hits K.J. Osborne to win the game last week at Pitt. Little play fake that linebacker holds and you see Jaron Williams just throw it right off that left shoulder of the linebacker perfectly in stride to Jeff Thomas. Jaron Williams only a redshirt freshman. And he shook the confidence of his head coach in him last week. He found himself on the bench in favor of Nikosi Perry. Playing well today, though. DJ Dallas picks up a couple. You wonder if Jaron Williams starts to give a UM fan faith and hope that maybe they finally have found one of those difference makers at quarterback that they've been looking for so often over the last few years. I think so. Um, I liked him on tape. I loved him on tape. But we talked about it this week. How natural his arm was, he's a freshman. Kane's fans need to be patient with his talent. There's so many good things there for him to build on in the future. I'd love to see what a naked or play action here right now. Stumbles coming away from center. Still gets it to DJ Dallas. And he gets a yard in the 15 yard line. And Miami can not only, as they work on the scoreboard, work on the clock. They can take this all the way down well inside of seven minutes to go. Jaron Williams gets stepped on by the, the right guard of the center, Corey Gaynor. It's a really good job of him getting away from there. My big toes, my two big toes, are no longer part of my feet because Excuse of those, those moments right there. Really? Getting stepped on all the time, man. Only everyone was as tough as that. Well, you are as tough as nails. Third down and seven. A sprint out for Williams. He's going to hoist one into the end zone. And it's knocked away. Mark Pope, the intended receiver. And that might have been an unnecessary risk for Williams to take because a field goal here makes this a three-score game with six and a half minutes to go. Listen, I love the fact that they moved the pocket and gave him a simple one to two read. I don't hate the decision. I would have liked to see that ball closer to the sideline where only his guy can go catch it. But a good drive, some nice third down conversions, a play action shot to get into this position. Camden Price from 32. And in this one, he has right down the middle. Three score lead for Miami with six and a half minutes left. Thicken's got to have a chance still, right? That's a cold t-shirt right there. <laughs> 17-point lead for the Hurricanes. Line drive kick to the goal line. Rayshon Harrison. 
to about the 27, but there is a flag down. A couple of flags, as a matter of fact. How about the day, though, for Gregory Rousseau? Yeah, the redshirt freshman's had a big afternoon. You put him inside, two-way go on that guard. Now he tries to get cut, cut off me. I got to go to Hornybrook. Then the hand slap. You're watching this athleticism get tied to some techniques, some skill. Again, he's only a redshirt freshman, a, youth, a guy who used to play receiver in high school. He's had a little bit of a coming out party here on ABC. Florida State guilty of a hold, so that will back them up. Now Manny Diaz, we talked to him about Gregory Rousseau, said that he is as nice a kid as they come. Said, I'd almost be surprised if he didn't apologize to quarterbacks after he sacks them. They have been a lot today. Yeah, he's getting a lot of opportunities for apologies. He's back there. He's been unblockable the last two weeks. He looked like this last week. Mm -hmm. If you watched UN play Pitt. There's Treshawn Harrison taking the direct snap. Akers the lead blocker. Let's go back to Cassidy. <laughs> update on number nine Utah who is trailing Washington until Tyler Huntley with the keeper to the right side gives the youth the 26 21 fourth quarter lead back to you guys all right Cassidy thanks very much and James Blackman is now in at quarterback in place of Hornybrook under six minutes to go Akers Bottled up, lost about a yard and a half. You know, Dan, all these years I've called games. Yeah. All the times that I've watched film with all different guys with different football backgrounds. You as a quarterback, and Brock Hewitt as a quarterback, or Matt Millen, Bob Davey, guys like that with defensive backgrounds. Everyone, when we turn the tape on, immediately goes to the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. No matter what their background is, they want to see if Team A can block Team B. As Blackman throws one over the middle and is able to hook up with Harrison. Because in this day and age of spread offenses, fantasy football, it's still a line of scrimmage game. And today, I think more than anything else, this has been a game where Florida State can't block Miami. And Miami can block Florida State. I, I put it like this. When you have an offensive line that isn't good, it exposes your flaws. The flaws of a run game. Or Here it is again. It, yep. It exposes the flaws. When you have a line that is good, you get to take advantage of all the other skill or talent that is around it. Silvera and Hill all over James Blackman now. The ball popped out. Miami thinks they've got a fumble recovery. No signal from the officials. And it looks like they're going to say it's still Florida State ball and Trayvon Hill is also shaken up on the play. So Manny Diaz's team, boy, they have been tremendous today. And we teased this in the first half, but he's an amazing story. His grandparents from Cuba, his grandfather at one point was imprisoned in one of Fidel Castro's jails, told his grandmother you need to get out of this country. And she escaped to South Florida. As Blackman rolls. He'll run up the sideline and step out of bounds near the 40-yard line. And eventually, his grandmother and grandfather reunited, gave birth to Manny Diaz's father, who went to law school, became a lawyer, eventually became the mayor of Miami, and now the mayor of Miami is the father of the U.N. head football coach. This from a couple that at one point had to visit each other in a communist prison in Cuba and make the decision to separate, to send mom to the U.S. because dad said you can't stay here. I mean, talk about an American success story. Incredible. Talk about his family tree and what his family's been through and the lessons that got passed down from that type Rebuilding Miami's football program is going to be the easy thing that, 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 that <laughs> exactly. him and his family have been through. Fourth and one. And obviously, the Knolls will go for it. Blackman's going to hoist one up for DJ Matthews. And this is going to be an easy interception for Gervin Hall. Hall gets a block. And he is into plus territory 
And brought down as Blackman got walloped as he threw that one deep. And Gervin Hall's going to get a chance to wear the turnover chip. The front or the blitz package from Miami's getting home. Sometimes it's been their D-line. Sometimes it's been those linebackers. Blackman thrust into a difficult spot, throws that ball up because of that pressure. Hall waiting there for that pick. DJ Dallas. That'll be a face mask call, you'd have to think, against Florida State. Boy, hard to believe no flag came out. It certainly looked like DJ Dallas had the face mask tug. And Sports Center tonight after top ranked boxing with Michael Eves and Zubin Mahenti. They'll recap UFC 244. Osvidal Diaz, post fight coverage. Plus Canelo Alvarez. Sergey Kovalev reactions as well. With Canelo looking for a world title in his fourth different weight class. Herbie's biggest Week 10 takeaways as well. All of that on SportsCenter after boxing later on tonight on ESPN and the ESPN app. I think it's important to remind everybody that Miami, every FBS game that they've been a part of this year has been a one possession game. We saw them open the college football season and play a really good Florida team tight. They started terribly against Virginia Tech, came back, but lost by a touchdown. They tackled awful against Georgia Tech, lost by a touchdown. We, th we thought that we, they were a better football team than the record said. I know you are what your record is, but I think it's been on display that there is some some really good talent still here on this football team. And Manny Diaz has them going in the direction that he wants them to, especially the 80% of their football team that is the most important one, those leaders. DJ Dallas. About two yards shy of the first down. Well, nothing provides hope for a program more so than feeling like you found a quarterback. Yeah. And Jaron Williams who has emerged from that quarterback battle of Tate Martell and Nikosi Perry. And granted, he's been and acted like a freshman mm -hmm. at times this year, as he just, at one point last week, quote-unquote, didn't prepare the way Manny Diaz wanted him to. But 313 yards and two touchdowns today, and he has thrown the ball like a big-time player. And I think there's a difference between being immature and being a jerk, being a bad person. And I think that there's just some immaturity there because of the youth and age and I would also point to this Bob I mean their first their offensive line goes freshman junior sophomore freshman sophomore I mean that offensive line that is incredibly young it's had a bit of big big afternoon as well and this is the start that Jaron Williams has tied himself to play action pass and throw in that football downfield there's weapons on this team a third down drift away for some pressure find Mike Harley and then dial up the, the play action pass again if you're Dan Enos at the perfect time those three touchdowns Harley Thomas D Wiggins all those special talented receivers that are out there just if, if they could find the quarterback to get him the football find the offensive line to block for him it's there, and this is kind of the the hope if you're Miami playing itself out there. They got a new play caller, Dan Eno, so I think very highly of, who's done an outstanding job up to this point of managing the game as a play caller and then kind of unloading today. They got a bright, young, talented quarterback, and then they've got skilled people on the outside, including a tight end, that are more athletic in matchup problems than most of the defenses that they're going to play. Inside of a minute to go, and on fourth and one, Miami will try to end the game in style and go for it. Last season, the Canes at home beat Florida State with a big comeback. Today, they took control. And they are about to win for the third consecutive year, and there is the first down carry for DJ Dallas, and that will do it.
So the Canes will win the rivalry game. And a big smile on the face of Jaron Williams. And he played like the kind of quarterback you want to build a program around today. Not bad for your first time playing in this rivalry game. To your point, a quarterback that you feel like, wait, we might have found him for the first time in 20 years. We might have found our quarterback to get us back to our glory days.